Coming to you from Crash Studios in Music City, USA, Nashville. This is the Rich Redman Show. On this episode, author, speaker, podcaster, athlete, and VP of Lone Depot, Brian Kobe. And now, Rich Redman. That's right. What is up, rock and rollers? All our people out in podcast land, where are you hiding? Hey, we got another exciting episode of the Rich Redman Show. Yeah, this is the show where we talk about all things music motivation and success and whatever comes up as always i've got my co-host joining me today jim mccarthy jim mccarthy voiceovers.com coming to you from a closet in spring hill tennessee jim you look great what's going on man oh uh, you know just uh, hanging out in the closet i'm back here again i love it and so what kind of uh, yeah. voiceover jobs have you been doing recently a lot of uh, phone system work you know, press one for this and press two for that and all that fun stuff. So you're the guy that's responsible okay. for keeping everyone on hold forever and never that's talking right. to a real human being. That's right. <laughs> Hi, you've been put on hold. No. Now you get to listen to me. At least it's not the uh, porno music that you normally hear. The <laughs> Jim, we didn't even rehearse that. We started at the same exact time. You know why? Because. Right. For those of you guys that are in the know, Jim is a he's a drum hobbyist. I mean, he's a killer drummer. He really has. He sat down in my kit one time and played the song Hicktown front to back. And he was like matching licks. He stayed perfectly in time. The guy is great, but he's also smart enough to just say, you know what? I'm going to get a real job at some point. And that's why he's in his closet doing voiceovers. That's but right. we, always, we always appreciate your time and talent. And hey, man, this always speaks to the power of relationships. I love talking about relationships because you did the voice intro for today's guests podcast. And who is today's guest? Today's guest is Mr. Brian Covey. Brian, what is up, man? What's up, guys, man? This is long overdue. You were on my show and crushed it. And well, it was to hang with Jim. It was episode 18. You had me on. Thanks so much, man. But hey, this is uh, for the folks out there. I want to let you know what this guy does. He is a former Olympic USA soccer player and now VP of Lone Depot. In addition, Wears lots of hats like all of us, a father, an influencer, an author, a speaker, and a top rated podcaster. Man, good thing you work out, man. I'm tired just reading that. <laughs> man, there are days, trust me, there, you got to work out to keep up the pace. And we all live in a world, if you don't have the energy, you can't accomplish what you want to. So I realized when I don't work out, I have less energy. It's a real simple equation. When yeah. I do work out, I have more energy. It's really simple for me now. Like I'm not fighting it. Yeah. And it's, it's to a lot go. of people, it's kind of like counterintuitive. They're like, well, Rich, you're, you're an animal up there. You're playing the drums. Isn't that a good workout? And you're like, no, I have to work out so I can do that workout, especially right. as you age, you know? Yeah, I do. I've figured that out too. Now with three kids, with our first two, I realized very quickly, I stopped working out. I was the person that was like, yeah, I'm just too busy. I had all the excuses in the world. And literally, Man, I, I started to put on weight. I started to feel worse. I wasn't sleeping good. It's a downward spiral. Yeah. That, that was kind of the hack for me. And now they're almost 15, 13, and they're a little six-year-old. So I tell you what, I don't, I don't want to go back to that place. That place mm -hmm. did, not, did not serve Brian or people around me well. No. And I, you know, I've done the same thing where you just get like super busy and sometimes you don't even realize you're not putting in that time. And then you look in the mirror and you're like, what is going on here? And I'm out of breath and I'm, I'm doing a speech up there and I'm like kind of like animal from the Muppets and I'm just, but I'm sweating too much. I'm like, what's going on here? And I got to get back to the, do you knock it out first thing in the morning as kind of trolling your Instagram? It looks like you get up and you knock it out. That's my jam. Yeah. We've got a, if I go to Iron Tribe, that's usually the 6 a.m. class. Oh, nice. I love that. It gets it done. I can get back by seven, help the kids get off to school, do all that fun stuff. Yeah. And for me, I've realized like putting in the morning, it's just, it's more likely to happen. If I wait in the day, mm -hmm. it probability goes down. It probably, I'm, I'm pretty disciplined and committed, but the probability goes down. And so I don't so like to right. play those odds. Yeah. You're so right. You know, I was, I was looking at this, um, thing it says you know these have these little kind of like fun meme type videos on facebook and one of them was the insane schedule that is mark Wahlberg, right so people look at these mm -hmm. hollywood movie stars and they're like oh they got it easy there is a price to pay for that kind of fame and to be in that kind of shape the guy's alarm goes off at 2 30 in the morning he goes he does a his first workout post meal workout then he does business Wakes up, does does the thing with the family, gets them off to school. Then he's like learning his scripts or doing whatever. Workout two, post meal workout, 
uh, post post workout meal. Then afternoon, more time to work on his business, memorize scripts, do the whole thing. Time with the family, and then imagine what time he's going to bed to get up at two thirty in the morning. That is insane. Yeah, I- I'm yeah. wondering. Was that supposed to be a uh, like a, a spoof or something? Because I remember seeing that, and it, it seemed like it had a spoof to it. I know. I like I, 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 I really ridiculous. think he's doing that. I mean, how do these guys? I mean, if you're walking around like ten months out of the year with like an eight pack, that is from the sweat yeah. of your yeah. brow. I mean, you can't mail things and be like, you know, today I'm going to have some honey wheat bread. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, this guy doesn't eat toast. He might, though. I'll tell you, these guys that post that, I'm, I'm not a subscriber to that 2.30 a.m. When I saw that, Jim, I think it was like what you're saying. I wondered, I was like, hold on, I don't know how that works because I well, tried to wake up earlier. And I, yeah, I can only wake up so early and go to bed so early. Well, it's uh, but the only thing is that it says, you know, 6 a.m. shower, 7.30 a.m. golf and then 8 a.m. snack, which, you know, he can eat, I guess, on the golf course. Yeah. And then 9.30 cryo chamber recovery. Oh, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Okay. <laughs> An amazing day going on right here. Like, I love that. Yeah. Where's yeah. his nap? Is he, get, is he got a, a midday nap in there somewhere? <laughs> He's got two showers a day, two workouts a day, and a 7.30 bedtime. <laughs> uh, yeah, good luck with that in our house. I mean, maybe it's made up, but even my the guys I in my... I mean, the guys in my band, you know, we've been touring together, finishing each other's sentences, smelling <clears> diesel <throat> fuel since... Uh, uh, God, 2004. And then they started cranking out kids and having families and they all moved to Franklin, Tennessee. Like, this is what we do. This is a rite of passage. And then their alarms go off at six in the morning because they got to help the kids get to school. And I'm like, six. I mean, I'll do it if I got to get to the airport. Like tomorrow, I got like a little minor in office surgery at 745 in the morning. And I, was, I asked the lady, I was like, you got anything else? You know, she's she, I was like, I said, I'm a musician. And she's like, no, sweetie. I was like, I'll be here. I'll be here. Uh, the things we, we make time for, right, is the yeah. things that we, we prioritize. But, you know, I will tell you this, like a little hack is start moving your alarm clock up a little bit, 15 minutes, 30 minutes. And over time, it might be a month, 90 days. And so now I don't even use an alarm clock and nice. my wife will make fun of me. I'll wake up if I just know hey, I need to get there. I like to wake up about an hour, so about an hour and a half before the workout. So I can get up, get moving, drink some fluids, get, get things going, spend some time actually doing some work before I go. And so I get that. And I'll tell you this, though. Once you get in that, your body clock. When I travel, like I went to California last week, not so good. Yeah, because uh, I still difference. wake up at the same time. Yeah. yeah. Same time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You know what I did last night? I was up to like two 30 in the morning working on a speech and I just, then I said, I got to get to bed. And so what I do is I just add six hours to that. So let me try to get six hours sleep. So the alarm goes off at eight 30. Sometimes you snooze to eight 45, but then I'm guilt ridden. I'm like, my friends have been up since for two hours and 45 minutes already, you know? And then I got, I, I better get moving. Yeah. <laughs> you, said, who, who self was it? guilt. <laughs> Wicked you got guilt. The first decision, the first decision you make every day, is that one, and I, I, just from experience, get up. It's the best decision you make. It's like whenever you're there, because a lot of people say, oh, I'll just lay there, I'll lay there. Nothing's good. It's going to happen at that point. Once right. you're up, go ahead and pop up. I've done the cold water as well. I don't know if you've ever done that, but I'll splash cold water on my face. Sure. And I think Tony Robbins talks about that, like cold plunge, cold shower or something. If you need help to get your body chemistry right, that's yeah. a quick little hack that I used for a while when I got out of rhythm. And I would take mm. a cold shower and yeah, it sucked. Yeah. Straight up. Horrible. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Maybe I'll but start your doing body that. physiology just, it rocks into motion. It's like, whoa, fight or flight mode. Mm-hmm. You're up, you're ready to go. And then guess what? Things start to happen. You're, Killer, you're man. ready for the day. Well, there's so much to talk about. We can either start with the now or we can go back in time. You know, the typical podcaster says, take me back to Memphis, right? You're from Memphis. You, I mean, you slap the bass. You're like a world-class soccer player. Now you're in the mortgage business and the real estate business. Yeah, I guess take us back. We're, you know, it's a dealer's choice. Take, tell us a little bit about your background. <laughs> I mean, is it not obvious how connected all of those things are? Like base, soccer, soccer. Memphis, uh, mortgages, mortgages yeah. dad, Franklin, <laughs> Tennessee. I mean, Motivator. Motivate, yeah. Podcast, uh, decided to write a book. Yeah. So what I would say, if you take all of that, like everyone that's listening, I've just tried to live life. You know, I don't, I don't 
think about holding back. I don't want to live a life of any regrets. Nice. And that was, I think was planted in me. Both of my parents worked and I would go after school and I would be in the after school care and I'd play sports. My older brother was five years older. And so what do you do as the younger brother? You try to compete with the older guys, get your butt kicked, but you realize, you know what? This sports thing, this, this might be like a way for me to have fun, get out of doing what I normally do, get out of schoolwork, which was always awesome. Yeah. And I found a little bit of success with soccer. So yes, it went on and coaches, mentors, and people, I learned the art of discipline. I learned how to be committed. But what I say out of all that is like, dude, I learned like hard work actually pays off. So yeah. a lot of people today, I'm going to call it what it is. They're soft. They don't want to put the hard work in because maybe in their life, they never worked hard enough to see the other end of it because mm-hmm. they quit too early. And, and I've been that person where I quit too early. And I go back to my soccer days of, I love competition. I love that part. And I think I got wired very uniquely as I ran into, Rich, if you'll remember back in the day in Memphis, I don't know if you remember this. I remember the store was like music center or something downtown. Mm, I go in, I see this guy playing the bass. Dude, he just sounds amazing. Uh, His name is Neil Bowen, by the way. I don't know if you know Neil. Amazing bass player. I look at my mom. We happen to be there. I'm like, mom, I need to get a bass and an amp like today. Teach me the bass. So that's how I fell into bass and loved music probably helped me um, scale back my competition (laughs) and some of the things that were there and create friends and like have that creative side. And and I think that together is what made me kind of start to develop who I am today, where I have this like creative side where I want to write a book. I want to do a podcast. I want to be into music. And then you factor that in with an athlete. And so I'm very uniquely, um, I think, equipped sometimes to go, dude, I'm just going to go try this. Because the creative side and then the competitive side, you put them together and I failed at a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff has not worked out or gone my way, but dude, I, I, I think I have that early mindset from my parents and just learning those two. It was a, it was a gift. And um, so that's, that's kind of the backbone of of how I learned it. So shout out to the 901. Memphis was good to me. Absolutely, man. You know, yeah, that competitive spirit of, of, uh, and athleticism, I, I missed out on it. Um, you know, I made up for it later in life. I discovered like, you know, running and uh, cross training. I tried Barry's boot camp. I do the Orange Theory. Yeah. And then now they got these cool apps. I'm using this one now called Fit On. And there's a stretching exercise. There's a hit exercise. There's a all the stuff, you know, and, it, and it's free, but then they want to, they want to upsell you for a certain dollar amount a month. I'm like, nah, I'm not, I'm not playing that game, but yeah, you learn about persistence and determination and the results of hard work and also teamwork. And that's, and that's something that's a commonality between music playing in a band is all about teamwork playing on a, 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 a sports playing sports ball is all about uh, teamwork. And uh, we can take those things in, into, into the real world for the rest of our life, you know, like school of rock, you know, I don't know if you're, if your kids are interested in playing music, but something like school of rock, you know, the kids, they might not go on to play bass professionally, but the main thing they're learning is how to get in a room and coexist with other people and have a common goal and get across the finish line and be able to take direction. And those are things that they can take into whatever career set they're going to go into. I love that. I remember jam sessions and things that we would just show up on the weekends and some of us that were still learning the, the art of playing music and playing together. And you just show up and you would just jam. Right. And it's like, that type of skills, you can't learn that in, in the office or in business or in school anywhere. And I love what you said there, Rich, because I think about that today is you know, even our team at Lone Depot, we've got people in marketing, compliance, finance, processing, underwriting, sales. You know what? We all need to figure out how we get on the same sheet of music. And I say that all the time. It's like, how do we get on the same sheet? Because if you're playing over here in the wrong key, you got the wrong tempo and I'm over here, guess what? It ain't going to sound good. It's going to feel good. Nobody's going to get it. So uh, yeah. I love that too, from the foundational aspect of if you can build relationships, you probably know this, in music, there's a lot of different personalities that if you can start to get along with people, start to build trust, it's, it's something that I think we can all learn from that. And so I'm always, I'm a student of the game, whatever game that might be, I'm just a constant yeah. learner. Well, you know, and, and that's kind of like the background, the backbone of your speaking events is that growth mindset and being a team player and constantly learning. 
Um, I know that just from being a speaker over the last, I don't know how many years, 12 years or so, uh, you find things that work and you're like, ooh, that was a cold opening. I didn't like that. Or maybe I should come out and play the drums first and grab their attention. Or then the next time you experiment with just coming out and talking first and establishing your your trust and your likability factor. And then you're like, oh, this works. You tape it, you audio tape it, you record it, you study yourself, you're constantly trying to up the game. So are, do you, do you uh, record yourself and, and, and do that thing where you're constantly trying to improve your speech and the stickiness of it? Yeah. So the best thing I ever did, shout out to Jim since he's on here, is dude, I was so afraid to start a podcast. I'll just tell you, I was like, <laughs> I know I need to do this. <clears throat> <laughs> oh man, but I've been listening back to the first few episodes. A lot of the first few is few is kind of a nice, it could be however many I feel like it needs to be. Yeah. yeah. But we all start somewhere and being okay with sucking at something and being a beginner, mm-hmm. I think is a really beautiful trait today. In today's world, everybody wants to have instant success, instant gratification, and they just they want it like right away. Yeah. And I think for guys like us, like I'm two years right now, I just two years into this, and I recognize. I know I've come a long way. Also recognize I have a lot further that I can still go. And so, yeah, I would tell you that helped my speaking more than anything because guess Amen. what? Then I was prepared yes. to lead our team that yep. no one told us. I didn't mm-hmm. get the memo in 2019 that we were all going to go virtual for the next two years. No one, oh. no one said that. Yeah. But guess what? Over 200 people that I'm in care of, that I need to make sure are, are well cared for and served. Well, if I didn't have some type of setup, even a semblance of how do you do Zoom calls? Like, how's this all? Like, I would have been totally ill prepared. Right. And I'll tell you, the best thing I just did recently is I started speaking on more stages. That was a goal of mine is how do I do that? I think I've got a message. I think within all of us, we've got some message, our experiences, you know, we've been created to share that message. I actually hired a coach to help me and went through a weekend event. And then I've been working with them before my last big speaking event. Yeah. And I think that's how we all get better is yeah. find somebody that's doing it at a higher level, ask them if they will help you. And then where I've really backed it up and I think accelerated is I paid them to help me because guess what? That's what they do. I should pay them for their services. <clears throat> yeah. You'll get someone better if you invest, right? You got to invest when I in yourself. Base. Yeah. Invest in yeah. yourself and pay. You know, I'm the first, I tell Jim all the time, I'll pay, I'm the first person to pay someone for their time and talent. I That's a check that I like to write because I know that I am, I have to put a dollar amount on my time and talent and I, and, but I love what I do so much. I mean, literally I'll be at a recording session sometime and we'll go for like 12 hours. The person maybe bought us a hot meal. Someone got paid to set up my drums. I'm having so much fun. I'm meeting new people, playing new music and they're like, Hey, don't forget this, man. Oh, oh yeah. I get paid We're for this. Getting paid. Yeah. yeah. No, yes. you know, no, in your, and your podcast is great. Uh, is the podcast is great. The Brian Covey show. And the book is uh, the uh, uh, the book Conversations with Co. I like that you have a hardcover, man. That is classy. Tw- a mere twenty three dollars to Jeff yeah. Bezos, and you can have a hardcover <laughs> book on your coffee table. And you took wisdom nuggets from your podcasts, which is I like that idea very much. Tim Ferriss did it, so I think you know Jim and I already have one hundred and fifty episodes that we're gonna have to like mine through. Um, oh, and he's yeah. like, when I say we. He's looking at me like, you mean you, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah Jim knows. He knows what's about to happen here. Yeah. Uh, but no, those are both great. Tell us about, tell us about the, about the book. Yeah. So that was really birthed out of the podcast started to take off. And I think it was such a beautiful time of everybody was at home. And so I, I look at, it, I go, maybe I got lucky. Maybe I worked hard. I don't know. I, I've always tried to be nice to people along my journey and I've got some great introductions that I recognized during that season, I was prepared and I was willing to ask. And so I asked some great guests. Like one of the first ones was Dave Meltzer, who by the way, has opened up massive amount of doors to people. And Rich, you came on early. And so it's like, okay, we got the musician side, we got the sports and entertainment side, and I was bringing on athletes. And so the podcast actually started to take on a life of its own where I started, I don't pay attention to a lot of stuff, but it really helped me start to build out my brand and connect with people in a season at their home more, they're listening to podcasts more. They want to connect to human beings. And I thought, well, wouldn't this be cool if I do the show and I bring on amazing humans that I've connected with? They could share their collective wisdom. And we could just have very cool conversations, laid back, not scripted. And I thought that, dude, I go back and selfishly, I look and go, 
I probably learned more than anybody because I got to talk to all like almost 100 guests now. Mm -hmm. And they they shared their their story, their secrets and all of this. So I I look back, Rich. Wow. I can't imagine if I hadn't have taken the step. So I got to give Jim credit because he was one of the guys that encouraged me. And there were a few that were like, you should do it. I'll just tell you, for anybody that's thinking about doing it, guess what? On the other side of those that were highly encouraging were the ones that are like, who do you think you are? Oh, what the oh, hell wow. with them? Brian, what the hell? Why are you doing a podcast? Who's going to want to listen to your podcast? Yeah, silence the noise, move on. Yeah. So, just get it out there. I love the haters. I love, told the, me that. I love to love the oh, haters. Just get it out there. I mean, you're two years into it, and that equates to, I, I always say in talk radio, two years of podcasting equates to about two months of radio. <laughs> Oh man, <laughs> absolutely. It, it is. Think about the reps you get though. And yeah. I had a friend of mine on, we recorded this week and he's been with me since the beginning. And it was a nice compliment. It was like one of those he gives, man, you've come a long way. I'm like, yeah, I know yeah. I sucked at the beginning, but that's how you we really didn't though. I mean, in the beginning, ah. I know you're, you're being hard on yourself in the beginning. You were just a natural because you're a naturally affable guy and, you know, just a beautiful soul and, and, and just, you, you attract people. You and Rich are very much alike in that sense that you just, yeah. Your, your personality is just, uh, they're, the, they're the beehive, you know what I mean? They just attract good people that want to glean off of you, but, and you're just a naturally likable person. That's, that's the appeal. Oh, dude. I love it. So here's the best advice I remember. I don't know if you remember telling me this, but early on, you were like, just be you, just yep. show up and be you. And it's like, you know, a lot of folks out there, whoever you are, you're trying to be somebody else. And, and I've learned to really harness who I am. And that's where the book came from, by the way, is I'm literally thinking about during that season. And so Rich, when you're asking about the book, yeah, I didn't know anybody else had done it, but I remember I was throwing the idea to Jim and some other people. I'm like, Hey, I've interviewed some really amazing people and I like books. I want to write a book. That's a goal. I'm going to take what I felt like was a really cool path, but a path I could get it done. Yeah. And I said, I was going to write a book, so I'm going to do it. And it was during that season where everybody was at home. And I was like, you know, not everybody wants to listen to a podcast. Yeah. Maybe they want the book. And so we took what we felt like were the most engaging kind of podcast, the, the, the guests that were on that people asked more about and followed. And I was like, what if we just put it in a book? And dude, that mm-hmm. was so cool. Like, I never thought we'd sell much. And now it's like, wow, a yeah. people actually bought it. And it's a it's cool, not- it's a nice deliverable. I can give it to yeah. people, sign it, take it to speaking events and all these things. And apparently I'm a published author, which, yep. you know, it's great. All of us, if you have that goal, you got to do it. Just yeah. do yeah. it. And, uh, you know, apparently for your, uh, yeah, not, not the word, not notoriety, but as far as like your trust factor and the, yeah. for you to land more speaking engagements, a lot of speaking uh, bureaus will say, crank out a book every two years, right? So, you know, you're thinking yeah. like over the next decade, I, there's going to be five more books, right? And they want to see f- at least five books on the Amazon, right? And uh, yeah. it's just so easy now to create the product, publish it yourself, keep all of the profits and use it to harness and cultivate your reputation. It's, it, it is an amazing time to live in this modern world. It really is. It is. And I look at people that have written books like the speakers, and it does just add a little bit of that trust and credibility where I go, cool, what's your book about? It's like something to engage and to have conversations. So I, I, I found that it was actually one of the best things I could have done for my career. Yeah. We actually give those out to people now. We yeah. flipped it. So we recruit a lot of you know, sales loan originators across the country. And two of our executives, myself and my buddy, Alec, we've written books and we actually send those to people because it's, it's unique. Not a lot of companies have published authors that are also just normal guys. So we send that. We actually, have, we've turned it into more than just a book on a shelf or right. sold on Amazon. And it's funny because um, a lot of the, th- the same things I, when I had Brad Lee on my podcast a couple of months back, uh, you're talking about in the, initially we went into it with the recruitment angle in mind for you. Yeah. Uh, and Brad and I talked about it on, on my podcast about culture creation and how he cha- he's challenged with, he, he's very uh, transparent when it comes to some of his challenges, which I can appreciate about him. And he always admits, he says, I don't know how to build a culture. I'm like, you know, we all know you're building one, one way or another, good, bad, or indifferent. Um, I said, and he said, he told me about a story about a woman who reached out to him and said, I don't care what it takes. I just want to come work for you. I just love what you do and your style. And I said, well, there you go. I said, do more of what you're doing. You're going to attract people naturally that are similar to you because of how you are. You're just being the real person. Similar in this situation, you're going to attract the people. You know, that's the right people. 
you know, right off the bat, just being who you are. Yeah. I mean, there's only one you, right, Jim? I mean, it's like, it's just, guys, there's only one you. So literally Mm -hmm. all you have to do is show up. It's like Woody Allen is like, he said, 99% of life is showing up. You know, it really helps if you're on time and you're prepared and, and you exceed expectations. You got a smile on your face and a firm handshake and you're likable. All that stuff really helps, but just show up and be yourself because there's only one you. And I think that's something that takes some people a long time to accept because we're in a culture of death by comparison. We're always comparing ourselves to other people. Well, this person wears nicer clothes. This person makes more money. This person's taller than me, this person. And, it, and it's like, you just have to own you and be the best version of you possible. And I don't know how you can lose these. Some of the tenets of your rules to live by. This is so simple and easy to remember. And I don't know why people have to complicate things with PowerPoint and death by PowerPoint. Be kind to others. Always be a learner, be hungry and hustle, and surround yourself with great people. I love this. It's almost like it's almost like crash. It's like five things that's so easy to remember. And when I when I see this surround yourself with great people, I always say, you know, surround yourself with birds of a feather, like-minded individuals. I've been totally these days, I've been totally uh binging on Les Brown. I don't know if you guys know Les Brown, yeah. but he, Oh, yeah. Great, great oh, yeah. speaker, <clears throat> thought leader. And his whole thing is OQP, only quality people. And he's got yeah. he's got a delivery style that I, I can. I love it. It's almost like a southern preacher. I wish I had more of that, but it's like only quality people. I, I mean, I wish I had that style. What were man. you saying about death by comparison, Rich? <laughs> yeah, I yeah. know. I'm, I'm walking around trying to do my Les Brown impersonation. But um, so simple, so easy to remember. But it's like, why do we need to complicate things? Yeah, uh, people it, do man. because that—that's how we were brought up and taught. You know, think about it, even in school, we overcomplicate learning and things that are there, and like we're almost taught to overcomplicate it. And then you're cramming. If you go to college, you're cramming for classes. You're you're trying to overcomplicate life over there. And I heard Les speak last year, and I will just tell you, when he came out, this is this is how we're trained. So this will kind of just frame up what you're sharing. He said, practice makes profit. What would you say? People mostly perfect. perfect. Yeah. That's what everyone says. That's yeah. not true. Practice makes progress. Ah, yeah. yeah. So if think about we've been wired. Yeah. We've, we've heard these BS statements. We've heard things like what you were saying a minute ago, Rich. And I'll respectfully tell you that is something I believed is 99% of the game was to show up. Let me just mm-hmm. tell you, if you want to level up your life, that ain't the game. Um, the game is actually the preparation, showing up and staying committed long after your feelings go away. Significantly different. I used to think I started in some of my career. I'm like, well, I'm just going to show up to this meeting. Well, then it doesn't matter if I participate. It doesn't matter what I give. It doesn't matter if I was prepared. To your point, it doesn't matter if I was on time. Do I leave early? Am I really listening to the speaker? Oh, squirrel. You know what I mean? Like, we've got to go all in and learn how to be focused and committed to some things that are truthfully boring in life to get great at them. Sure. And so I, I used to believe some of these things. Practice makes perfect. No, it does not. Showing up is 99% of the battle. No, it's, it's actually, and those are things I'm starting in my life to identify areas that I go, I believed this. Right. Like I lived under that. That is not true though. In my life, I know it. So this is where I'm starting to lean in on some of our social is I'm starting to share some of these things of, I believed this. When this happened, this is what I now believe as a result. Yeah. And I'll tell, dude, it's eye-opening how much stuff I've allowed myself to believe. Sure. And I go, well, I learned it. Where did I learn it? Early in childhood. Yeah. Experience. Yeah, but, man. When I, yeah. but, when, but when I say this is, I guess this is just the, the, I don't know, the Boy Scout in me, where it's like when I say show up, I, it's in quotation marks like show up and with with the repetition and the preparation over preparing so I could exceed expectations. You know, it's like if someone uh, hire me to play in a band, even if we're just doing songs like we're going to do Surrender by Cheap Trick. We're going to do uh, Old Time Rock and Roll by Bob. And every, you know those, right, kid? You got it. And I'm like, no, oh, yeah. I'm going to go revisit the things. Make I got make sure I got the exact tempos. I got the kick drum patterns. I know the exact fills. Because those are classic songs for a reason. And to not actually put the time into actually, it's a slap in the face to all those artists and their artistry. 
so exceeding those expectations. Oh, I love that you said that though, because that's how you're wired and people are listening. I hope they listen to that. It's like, that's how you view showing up. A lot of folks, and we coach through this in our sales team is they just show up and they're like, oh, hold on. they didn't prepare. Like you just talked about how cool is that? Like, it's like, before you make a sales call, have you looked up to who the person is you're calling? Do you have any right. background? Like there's a lot of prep that goes in. And I love that you say that way, because I think that's part of what's missing today for people that are like in this good spot, but they want to be great. And yeah. dude, mic drop on that because <laughs> showing up does require to be prepared. Yeah. Just, yeah. Well, oh, you, I love let, me, that. let me ask you guys yeah, this. I mean, you, you're both very positive people and Rich, I've posed this question to you in the past. You know, there are seasons in life, you know, right, life has got rhythms. Um, I'm, I'm going through one right now. You're both, uh, Brian and I, you've talked about, I've talked about it with you, Rich, you know about it. Uh, it's, it's a trying season right now. It's been a year. I've been telling people, I say for the past two months, I felt like I've lived five years. Um, I don't feel like 10 years ago, the person I, I was would have collapsed by now, like a house of cards. I, and I, and I, I'm trying to figure out what changed in me over this past time that I'm just at peace. There's a, just a tangible element of peace about going through this. And I just keep on telling myself that, look, a lobster can only grow by breaking through its shell. It has to live in discomfort in order to grow. Uh, people suffer in their own comfort. A great friend of mine said that to me this morning. And it's, it's so true. I feel like I'm growing as an individual, but every now and then you get in those seasons, you get some dark times mm. and you got to get up every now and then. And it's like something I wish people would start addressing more in the influencer space on Instagram and such to address. Not everything is sunshine and unicorns. Sometimes you're going to wake up and just go, oh my gosh, I just don't want to, I, I yeah. I'm, you know, trepidatious today. You know what I mean? And how do you wrap your mind around my, for me, it's been a gratitude of sorts, you know? Mm -hmm. Because it's been it's been a rough past two months for me. Well, so. uh, first of all, Jim, I love lobster. Okay, so you're making me hungry. And then tomorrow, uh, to help you through this season, I am taking Jim to Brick Tops, and we're gonna. He gets to order whatever he wants on the menu. He can order a freaking lobster. We can have midday martinis. We might and need we're to call splitting Uber. The bill. <laughs> no, we're not splitting the bill. This is on me, buddy, because of what the value you bring to the Rich Redmond Show and the fact that I love you so much as a friend. We're, you're going to get through this, buddy. And I think, uh, you know, I'm really. Um, being rude right now because our guest should be answering this right but i think that what has made you so first of all you're a man of extreme faith which is very helpful yeah. but at the same time the last 10 years you have been an extreme entrepreneur entrepreneur mm -hmm. and it's the fact that is you have to have massively thick skin to do that and to provide for a family in that way as opposed to just showing up to the office going to the water cooler, pouring a bad cup of coffee and doing that thing, you know, you're, you're a very strong and resilient man because you're an entrepreneur. I think. Mm. I could see that. What yeah, do you I think? think that's like, I think from the first time I met you, you have this like quiet confidence about who you are. And I think, I mean, I believe this, like with my faith and everything that's here, we've been preparing for seasons and they're not always seasons that are going to feel good you can go back in the Bible and like, you look back, like there were not always seasons that Jesus went through and, and everything was hunky dory. We were talking about this morning in a uh, all pro dads meeting, right? We were talking about how Jesus was actually crying and weeping and bleeding because he had fear. He had concerns. He was feeling pain. You're going, hold on. This is like the savior. Like yeah. how did, how did he feel that? And I think you almost in ways you go through these seasons to remind you, like you said, gratitude, the word you said there is like, okay, we're kind of out of alignment. We're out of rhythm over here. How do we move back to this? And I, I've always believed this, and it's become true lately, is God never gives you more than you can handle. And I'd heard that growing up, and I'm like, well, until you get fired from your job or you lose somebody to cancer, or you have a family member that dies, or you have something that happens, you're like, that you don't know. And your story, I think what'll come out of this, this is just my belief and my spirit says that there'll be something out of your story that's gonna be able to help a lot of other people. Yeah. So the more that you can understand why things are happening, but the other side of like, you're going to be used as a vessel to share and help other people because uh, you know, yeah, I just, no. and that's hard to, it's, it's not it's sure easy to say, but when yeah. you're in the middle of it, I've been in those seasons. You're like, what in the world? But that, that's the thing is like, yeah. you know, when you're going through it, do you, do you like, you know, am I, 
even though there's a lot of sensitive things that are going on, you know, do I talk about it in a general sense and saying, you know, look, I, like, I guess if I were to do a video or something like that, I would say, you know, I wish other people would gravitate, you know, especially influencers, business influencers. I get the motivational aspect, but there's a motivation to empathy, to, to leveling with people and saying, I get it, man, you're going to have days, you're going to have seasons, months, sometimes even years at a time where it's just not going to make sense, where it's going to feel like you're, you know, up against uh, a mountain of just problems and it's always something, right? Uh, and it's going to be a lot of some things. And it's one of those things that you just have to understand that other people have gone through it. Even people who have, you know, the Tony Robbins of the world, he's gone through it. Absolutely. I remember a story, recall a story him talking about going up on stage and he had something like $20 million at stake, like in debt that he yeah. owed. And he was like, how in the world? am I going to make good on this? And here I am. I got to put on a happy face and motivate people. But in the back of my mind, I'm freaking out, you know, <clears throat> but it's just, yeah. I mean, it's those, those kinds of stories that I think people need to hear more, especially now, Yeah. Um, you know, especially with what the world's going through in this we zenith, you know, we're going through. Oh. You know, I think you're on to something. I think you share that and it, it creates a little bit of a movement and conversation, if nothing else yeah. around it. And then what, what I've learned, you know, my dad's a psychologist. And so I grew up and I kind of had a little bit, I say, of an unfair advantage of like, yes, he's my dad, but he also was trained uh, to have difficult conversations. Yeah. And, and I remember some of the best advice was, you know, Brian, you're going to go through seasons and there's lessons in every season. When, when things aren't going your way, you feel like you're getting kicked in the butt, you're losing, just nothing seems to line up. Can you find the lesson in there and can you be grateful? Because if you can... When things are going your way, you're probably going to be more giving and you're going to be a, a bigger impact than you would have been to where I know a lot of people, when, when things aren't going their way and they start to win, it's all about them. And it's like, I'm going to go buy material things. I'm going to do this for me. And like, I'm going to celebrate me. And it's like, no, 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 you're being blessed so you can bless other people in those seasons. So I hope conversations start around this because I'm, I'm with you. I've been in seasons where it's like depression and things and being, you know, not the person I wanted to be and looking in the mirror and going, who's this guy? Yeah, yeah. Like, I could be better. Yeah. And then how do you, how do you work your way out? The only, the only piece of advice I would share with anybody listening or in this is every time I've surrounded myself with, with people in those seasons, I've a mentor or teacher has appeared when I put myself out mm -hmm. there and I can go back to very specific seasons and go, they were in my life during that season for that exact freaking reason. And some of them, look, we don't even talk to this anymore. Like, but they were there in my life during that season for that reason. Yeah. I believe that. Jim has talked me off the ledge many a times. Not like I was ever going to really <laughs> jump, but I'm, I'm just like, yeah. yeah, you know, just like literally. But I mean, it's like, he's like, buddy, you know, hang in there, man. You got this going for you. You got that. Celebrate these good things. You know, he's my muse. Jim really is my muse. So that's why if I need to go kick somebody's ass or something, Jim, let me know, man. You know, I'll, I'll <laughs> you know, take him down. You know, today I, I suffered some road rage today. I was the victim of road rage. If, if, if you guys, it's happening more happens all the time in Los Angeles, but it's happening more in Nashville now that we're growing and there's nowhere to expand all moving here. <laughs> they're moving here. You gotta, we can't expand the roadways. Northeast <laughs> and the Californians are moving here. I mean, this guy and got out of his probably... car today and like like was bashing on my driver's side window at the red really? light because he was mad that I didn't run the yellow. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, you know, and the, th the thing is that I, you, you've heard me bring this up, Rich, about the we zenith, you know, the sure. pendulum theory. Yeah. That it, everything we're going through right now, the tumultuous, and the biggest thing that they talk about during this time, because it happens every 80 years, like clockwork, is that you can have global conflict. Look what's happening with Russia and the Ukraine now. Yeah, okay, yeah, we've, yeah. Got a, we've got a, a lot of stuff to worry about that's causing a lot of uncertainty and a lot of the same kind of uh, thing that, that our grandparents lived through in World War II. But the, the cultural attitude is, I'm okay, you're not okay. That's a perfect example of that right there. Yeah. You know, somebody just, and, and it's one of the things, and I tell people the hope that comes out of that is that there are brighter days to come. We will get through it. We've been through it before. Yeah. It's cyclical. And, yeah. and, you know, our children, Brian and my children will be the benefactors of that, 
that tipping yeah. point, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So I heard uh, Rich to that. So I was listening. I think it was Andy Frazella the other day. I was talking about something similar to that. And, and, and he was talking about this is like, so what happens? I get out of the car, beat the crap out of the guy. I win the fight. I get sued It's on TV. Somebody videos it in this world. Somebody's videoing it. Yeah. Did I win? There's no, there's no win in that deal. And I used to have some of that. And it's like, man, we got to think as, as leaders and as, as dads and all this, like just in the community of and everything that we're doing right now, w- would you be okay if somebody was videoing it and showed it on the news? Like, yeah. I started to think through that lens. And I was like, okay, there's some different decisions <laughs> yeah. in these situations that we would make. I started know, playing and- out the scenarios in my head. I was like, well, what I should have done was been done like a Spidey or Spider-Man kind of thing where I just took the door and just slammed it into the guy's midsection and show it. But the guy was probably 10, 12 years older than me. What am I going to do? Get out of the car and start punching an old man. He was very upset. This guy had something yeah. else going on in his life. And I <laughs> took the right. high road. I took the high road. <laughs> Yeah. You never know yeah. what they're going through. And that's the, that's the point too, is like, you don't know. I mean, for somebody to get that mad about something that small means there's way bigger issues and problems that they're facing and just pray for them and move on, man. Like you, you're not solving that one at the at yeah. stoplight. I did the right thing. Was it a, it, it's the double-edged sword with the sharpest point of it pointed at you when you have that kind of reaction Whew. is what they say. Yeah, man. Well, Hey, you know, I was watching uh, during the, the pandemic, there was some really um, t- heart string pulling Lone Depot commercials where they had, you know, the people that were like, it's such, I, I mean, I got a house. And do you have anything to do with those commercials? Because they are awesome. I mean, it's like yeah. uh, they're, they're, you know, the greatest thing you could do is to provide this for someone. I love it, man. It's very Aww. effective. I, I, I mean, I, I mean, I'm the kind of guy that'll cry at like Big Bang Theory. You know, like I'm very emotional. Yeah. So they got me, Big man. Theory. Yeah. Oh, the, I, I got to give a shout out. Our media and marketing team yeah. absolutely knocked the cover off the ball. And what's interesting about that, home is everything was the slogan. Now, think about this. That was actually in the works before COVID hit. Right. Oh, wow. So when that hit, I mean, we just happened to stumble on the fact that home was more than everything. I mean, it was like, it was all we had. And when we said home is everything, it was everything. You yeah. worked there, your kids were in school from there, you worked out there, you, you had dinners there more than you ever had. It became something. And then we decided, you know what, we're going to feature real customers that we've actually helped. And so that's why the stories probably touched you is that yeah. these were real first time home buyers or families coming together to live with their grandparents or parents and families coming that, that could never afford to live in a home, they needed somewhere to go. And so they really did have emotional attachment. And that's why they probably cut through the noise more than any of our others. And that's our culture. Yeah. Like we, we are able to serve people in a time that we can educate them and help them buy a piece of the American dream. So yes. we should be very excited about that. And we should share the stories to inspire others. And that's, that's still why I'm in the business 20 years later is there's stories like that. You go, how cool is that? Like yeah. we got to help them get their first house. Here's you know? a product idea. How about a bunch of rocks with different sayings of gratitude on them? And we'll call them gratitude rocks. We really put, we put out the idea. Someone's going to beat us to it and steal us, Jim, steal the idea. Jim. <laughs> don't, that don't was actually your idea. Yeah. <laughs> you can't air this part. Yet. That was a good, that's a good idea though. It's a cute little Great idea. One. I just you know, what are the, you know, what are the legal ramifications of having a rock in your pocket? Is it a weapon? Um, is there like a little disclaimer on the little packaging that says, you know, yeah. uh, 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 Crash Entertainment LLC is not responsible for, you know, you know I, how does that work? Because I, it wouldn't be cool to have a little rock, a tiny little rock in your pocket where you can pull it out every day and have like a fun little positive quote to remind you to be a good person and to, to count your blessings. Yeah, oh, dude. I love it. How about this, Jim? So, you know, I'm a huge soccer fan. Grab a soccer ball and on the patches that are on there, you could put things you're grateful for on the soccer ball. And you could turn the ball and look at different spots. So not a weapon. It's safe. <laughs> but how many millions of kids play soccer? And it could be a gift. It could sit somewhere. You could take it out on the field. And <clears throat> trust me, there's kids that break down on the soccer field still. Different yeah. ages. They need it. Hey, you know, that's, that's uh, I think you need to chase that. You're, 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 you know, that, that might be a nice little multi-million dollar idea for you. I'll start writing it on my kid's ball tonight. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I love that. That ball could be featured in Castaway 2. 
<laughs> so tell us a little bit about 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 the about the business. How long have you, how long have you been there? And the, is the idea you guys don't have brick and mortars, right? It's all online. The business no, we do have we have we have both. Yeah, okay, we're very nice. much an online, and our business has shifted so much. And you guys know this is we say people start online looking for their mortgage, looking for this new home, mm-hmm. but we want to help them finish local. And so we do have local offices all around the country. And that's part of my job is I go out and attract, recruit, train, coach, all of that, the local professionals. Because look, the local real estate agent, or if you're moving, let's say from LA to Nashville, you want to know, hey, where are the best restaurants? Where, what, what are the schools like? And so we, we view ourselves as part of that process of, hey, you know what? I live in the community. I'll, I'll help you figure out all those things. Maybe where do I go to hear great music? Yeah. Great. I know that. That's where <clears throat> local matters and, and local will be able to help you those partnerships that are there. And we're scaling. I've, I've been there only four years, you know, nice. and the company's only 12 years old. We went public okay. last year, but our team alone, just, just our group, our region, we hired 85 people last year. And we grew from four years ago doing $245 million in loans so last year we did two point four billion dollars just with our team. Wow! Wow! Oh, it's tremendous, and we're promoting leaders, and we're hiring leaders that want to create other leaders. And that was my big vision: was I wanted to hire leaders that would also help us create other leaders that would create other leaders. And this generational, real ripple effect, and that's what we've we've built the culture around. That I went from literally a branch manager and sales manager to now we have sixteen branch managers and fourteen sales managers. And wow. we are not done, guys. Like, no way, no how. I think this year we'll probably hire over 100 people. You know, we think um, given even the market with the changes that are happening with inflation, interest rate rises, all that, we still believe we'll grow market share and our team will grow and we'll be able to serve more customers. So the mm-hmm. best is ahead. I've, I've got a lot, of, um, a lot of hope, but also a lot of faith that we, we've got the right people and the right culture. And we just need to protect that and continue to get better. Nice. I agree. Now, are you guys, what, do you, what is your hiring? take on? Sorry, Jim. Uh, we're always hiring. Yes. That's, that's a good way of saying yes. Now, what I say is we've gotten very clear on our targeted avatar, like who that person is that fits with us, whether it's sales, operations, marketing. We've got what I believe now is enough tenure under our belt. We know who works out. And maybe some of the people that, that, that aren't built, they're not in the best alignment for us. And what I love going forward is, we're going to be able to create this. We've got our own technology. Our brand has grown with the sponsorship of Major League Baseball. You'll start to see us. That was our first year last year. And then the Miami Marlins Stadium, we've got Lone Depot Park on there. Oh, we're right. just getting started. Yeah, we are, we're still a young company. 12 years old is a young. You think sure. about Rocket, who's number one. Rocket's mm-hmm. over 30 years in the uh, business. Oh, really? We're 12. We're 12. <clears throat> wow. It's like a 12-year-old doesn't know what a 30-year-old knows. We, we still have this evolution and process. We've got a lot of runway ahead of us, I believe, and a lot of growth. So I'm, I'm, dude, I get excited every day because we get to make a difference. And it's something, not every industry, I think you get to do this. Well, it's amazing. I mean, you, when I met you several years ago, uh, we don't have the influx of uh, you know, California that we do today. Uh, has that been uh, just an unbelievable positive for your, you know, your company and, of course, all the other mortgage and real estate interests that are out there. I mean, it's, it's, it's gotta be unbelievable being inside this industry right now, especially here. Yeah. So here's where I say we benefited is having a national brand. This is why I believe it differentiates us is if somebody is moving from California, our headquarters down in Irvine and in Orange County, they will know and recognize our brand, which means they have an impression. They probably know us. They probably trust us to some degree. If they're moving to Nashville, they go, Oh yeah, I know Lone Depot. Cool. So that's where we've really started to leverage the size and scale of our company. And I think that's where we outperform and why we're growing. The small company is going to struggle because the cost to acquire customers is going up significantly and they don't have a brand. So all of this relocation that's been occurring, and I think it's going to continue. Yeah. If you don't have a national brand or you're not licensed in all states, if you're only in Nashville and that's your only market, not very diversified. So we, yeah. we have absolutely gotten the benefit of that. I think it'll continue too, Jim. I think this is one, because here's where I see it. Now people are buying second homes, investment properties, especially down in Florida, not too far. Yeah. And they're like, hey, you know, I did my mortgage with you in Nashville, for example. I want to buy a place in Florida. Great. Yeah. We do loans in Florida. We'll help you. 
Nice. That yeah. that's that's something Resilient customers jewel. want that one stop. They yeah. they want to they want to build a relationship and continue that. Second and third tier upbringings for sure, but I mean that's uh with a, it's funny because even on, I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but there, uh, the last I checked, I was about 19 Facebook pages, groups that are all geared towards leaving California, moving to Tennessee, like specifically <laughs> really mentioning either Nashville. Yeah. Some part of Tennessee uh, in, in the, in the state, or even just, you know, coming to Nashville, 19 Facebook groups with thousands of, of members, thousands of them. Wow. Unbelievable. I was astounded. And I've joined all of them, of course, you know, because yeah. you want to get in front place. of them. That's New a great place for loan officers to go. You know, we share oh, yeah. that with them is, you know, this is, this is for you. This is the, the hunting season in the sense of your prospecting looks very different because you don't even know these customers. But if you can go online and join these groups and build out those friends and engage, there you go. There's prospecting in 2022. You know, you know, Matt Bogosian, does that ring a bell? Yep. Yep. He actually, as the admin, he created a page called Moving to Tennessee from California or whatever. He's got about 7,000 people on there, and he's nice the man. Yeah. He's, the, he's a realtor. Oh, yeah. Wow. I've seen him. <laughs> very well known. Him. Yeah. You can see his pages and his engagement, and I think he's done a great job from what I've seen of how he just engages with people and just adding yeah. quality content. What a cool way. Like Building a brand today is not so hard if you yeah. know what you're trying to accomplish and right, who, who your customers are. Oh, yeah. You know, Brian, I would love, I always have this weird uh, fantasy about having like other careers, like uh, being like the shirtless saxophone player or uh, owning, a, owning a pizzeria and like flipping the dough. And then yeah. like, I love the idea of, of, of helping to find the perfect home for a family and being the guy that would, because I'm a natural salesperson, like <clears throat> showing these people this house and right there, you could put your recording studio and then right in this, right there, look, there's a pizzeria up the street in the great school district, but the the paperwork, man, that is like, blah, 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 blah. that keeps me out of the game. <laughs> I don't even think that really game, happens buddy. right now. It's basically oh, a house goes on the market and there's like 40 offers. On yeah. It. <laughs> yeah. Even before it goes on the market, it's like all, all the, the insider trading, I call it. It's like, <laughs> hold on. I didn't even know that was for, for sale. Like, oh, oh, yeah, I mentioned it. Didn't really put it in the MLS yet, but yeah, that one's. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. 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 Well, man, you're a likable guy. I would love to do business with you, man. Are you, uh, um, you come from a hearty stock, man, like a good guy. And uh, so you still have, do you still have your folks? You still have your folks? I do. Both my parents are still in Memphis and my right. brother. Yeah. Wild to think they're late seventies. Now I was talking to my mom and dad this weekend. I was like, mine too. Wow. Yeah. It's just wild, you know, and very blessed. Cause you see that happening and changes and, um, actually hopefully going back to Memphis here in a month or two, which yeah. we've got a branch there. Like, you know what? I always love going back. Great food, great people. I've still got a lot of, a lot of family and friends. Where's your, uh, where's your favorite barbecue spot there in, uh, in Memphis? Ooh, I'm a rendezvous guy. I just do, do the environment, everything there. I, I'm not going to say it's the best barbecue because I'm not going to go on record because I've, I've, I've been to a couple of other spots. Um, we like Corky's here that's in Brentwood. Yeah. It's got that Memphis flavor to it so we can get that here. But there was something about rendezvous. We had like receptions there. We would have celebration when our sports team, like soccer would win a championship. We would go to the rendezvous and just the waiters have been there for years and then their sons or daughters, like they work there. It's just rendezvous is like, gotcha. it, it's a staple. You, oh, yeah. Yeah. Got to go there. I just drove past Corky's and you know what? I am hungry, man. As Les Brown says, I'm hungry. I am hungry. <laughs> I mean, what a delivery that guy. What it's good. Yeah. It's good. Hey, yeah. who's a, a, a dream guest to have on your podcast? Who are you, who are you pining for? Oh, for me this year, it's definitely going to be Ed Milet. I've got my yeah. eyes. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. He is, he's just made an impact on me and I'm part of Arate Syndicate. Yeah. I mean, that's like the vibes I get. One of my friends, <clears throat> Craig uh, Siegel just had him on. And there's something about just his spirit. I think our faith would connect, but I look yeah. at what he's done, financial services, you know, and I nerd out because I'm like, I mean, when I go, if, if I'm going to pick one podcast to listen to on the plane, I, I go to Ed first because yeah. his guests are phenomenal. He's phenomenal. And then he's we get a chance. So with yeah, yeah. Right. Like I just go, who would people want to hear? I mean, he's mental salad. I mean, he really oh. is. He's mentally healthy. I mean, just, just a good 
guy to marinate your mind in for sure. Well, we have, we have his address. Is- we have the email address to book them and <clears throat> it's somewhere. And so it's on our to-do list. So here's the deal. If we book him first, then we're going to tell him to come on your show. If you mm. book him first, then you could say, hey, drop by the Rich Redmond show. I hope you like the color red. Um, let's and do let's, yeah, we'll do it. We'll do it up. I'm going to fly out to California. We actually um, have made some inroads there and I want to go and meet him. And I've been trying to win the contest and all that. But I think it's always good. This is for those that are doing podcasts or just, I had my, and Jim, you know this, I had some dream guests that we were able to bring on some, like Ryan Serhant was a big one for me, yeah. real estate mogul. Ryan was one of the best guests as far as just the humility and the substance and all. I'm going, how in the world did we get this done? This is awesome. Yeah. So I, I'm always looking for who is that, that next person. I've got a list of about 25, but nice. as the top. Yeah. Awesome. Yep. The Brian Covey show conversations right. with Covey. And then if somebody wants to, you know, get a, um, a loan through you guys, loan deep is loan depot.com. Can they request you like, say, look at, I'm going to do this, but I'm only doing it. If I do business with Brian, you can. And so okay. our team, we're across a lot of States now. Okay. You can reach out directly to me at the Brian Covey on Instagram because someone took Brian Covey. So I had to put the Brian Covey. Well, it's so better. You know. It's more effective. The. Wait, apparently yeah. it's like the cool thing to do. I didn't even mean to, yeah. but uh, that's awesome. Or just go to briancovey.com. That's Love my it. main page. It's got the podcast, the book, the speaking, the, the loan stuff, all of that. And, and what I would ask if the show or anything we've said has resonated, it's helped you made an impact or whatever. I love, I read the, all of those notes and I go back this week. We had a pretty big release, Jim, you know about, and it's like, dude, I love reading those notes. And mm-hmm. we had people that I could actually help or they had questions that I could help answer that. That's what, that's what we do this for. Right. Right. I love Very it, man. Cool. You're, you're, you're checking all the boxes, man. You're super positive. You're getting it all done living a great life here in uh, middle Tennessee. You slap in the base. We're going to get together one time. You know what? We'll eat, yes. we'll work out, eat barbecue. I'll get on the drums. You get on the base. Uh, Jim will, I don't know. He'll sing a song or something. I mean, Jim, he's fearless. I and mean, we'll have I a great can time. Sing. As long as it's like, you know, Neil Diamond or something. I can stay. Oh, Neil yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, we may jam again. We may have. Hands. Hands. They're Good. coming to America. Nuts. What a, Dude. what a nuts. He's so described nice. like one of my perfect days. Now, if I was able then to get on the private plane and go to the beach with my family after that, that night, like, that's like, that's my day. Yeah. My day. Oh, yeah. It's coming, man. Awesome. Pri- I was on a private plane the other day, man. And it was like, this is, I was like, how much is this thing? It was like, oh, you know, like 12 Seven million. Seven grand an hour. It was like $12 million. And, um, and I, and I, it was like, you know, after the gig. And so I popped open like a, this kind of like highbrow IPA and, and it just, I don't know. I popped it open and it just everywhere. Right. And so most normal people would get up and like, like go hold it over the sink or like put it over the trash. And literally, I don't know. It was weird. It was, I was tired after this. It just, and it just bubbled over like that volcano project that the kids have at school. And it was just spilling all over my leg and everything. And the guys were just laughing at me. They're like, dude, you just sat there and watched the whole beer explode on your, (laughs) on your leg. And I was like, I don't know, man. I was so mesmerized. Had to be there. Um, <laughs> Brian, thanks so much for doing this, man. I can't wait to, to see you in the flesh at some point. Yeah, dude, we got to do that. That's, that's on my short list this year. We've got to do that. You describe the day with this barbecue, face, workout, whatever. I love hey, it. Let's man. do it. I love it. Thank you so much. Absolutely. And Jim, thanks for your time and talent, man. Always great to see your smiling face. And to all the listeners out there, thank you guys so much for tuning in here. We really appreciate it. Be sure to subscribe. Share the episodes. Leave us a nice review. Give us a five-star rating. It really helps people find the show. And hey, if you want to send us some praise or some criticism, but more praise, the Rich Redmond Show at gmail.com. All right, guys. We'll see you next time. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Brian. All right. This has been the Rich Redmond Show. Subscribe, rate, and follow along at richredmond.com forward slash podcasts.